What are you doing in there, Ash? Step bro! Help, I'm stuck in the tank! Right, are you ready for the hike? It's uh, about three miles to the 434, and then we drive down to the Abbey, yeah? It's mud as well. Yes, yeah, there was good old rain last night. At least we ain't got to carry a load of great big heavy tool bags. Oh, no, we've only got the light one. This is a strange face. Have you got a lumpy arsehole? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> right. I suppose I ought to jump down there, really. Well, all in all, that was pretty painless. It's all in, I've got all the, the fuel pipes on. I, I really do love taking a fuel tank out with the pack out. There's just so much room. It's so much quicker. Yeah, it's a breeze. Cool. Everything's easy. And that's how we like it, easy. The only problem, now we've painted it, we masked that pipe a bit far, that's gonna bother me, but maybe I'll come down one day with a paintbrush. Uh, the only problem is we really should have painted the whole engine bay because now the fuel tank looks a bit out of place. Mm. To be continued. <laughs> Stick around for part 12. So, that is where my solenoid lives. Now, I'm probably going to have to loosen off the hydraulic tank, shimmy it over, but I don't really want to take the hydraulic tank off. That's what these uh, skinny hands are for. And uh, get in there. Get some stuff in there so that the, there's basically a linkage inside. I would show you, but you never had to see. Um, and when your solenoid engages, it pulls that linkage up. When that linkage moves, it then moves a bar on the inside of the actual injector pump. The, the, all it does is just lets the rack move. So if that solenoid is down, your rack is pushed all the way out. And when that linkage is up, when the solenoid is pulled, that rack can then move freely. Um, only problem is you don't. It won't stop on the switch. Then it will just run on. That is what this is for. So you've got a decompression lever down there. Now there is a cable that goes down to the driver's foot, but this is for the instructors. And to be honest, it's a far more easy and reliable method. You just pull that and that'll stop it. Happy days. There you have it. The plate is now off. It's a pretty tight fit, but basically in there, I might be able to show you. There's a solenoid, so what I'd get to get Tom to do is once he's plumbed all the batteries in, when he flicks the ignition on, in theory, that solenoid should then come on, or I can push it up and it will hold on. And then, now I don't know, it doesn't look like much, but you've got a selection of nuts. What you do when the solenoid goes up, you waggle one of these in there, and on the bottom of the linkage, it actually sits in the hole of the nut, and then you disconnect the solenoid. And it's it's constantly got tension on it. Right, turn me on. You turned on? Not yet. Oh, what did, what, what did we disconnect from down there? Quite a few things actually. I don't know. I've, I've been flicking all the bits that should work. For yes, you. we've disconnected quite a lot of stuff actually. Right, now that we turned on, it should it will it will lock up by itself. 
when you actually click the starter motor but now that there's uh, the ignition's on you get a holding voltage so if I push it up stay up might hurt the click that is now up I'll try and get one of these nuts I might need smaller nuts I might need bigger nuts who knows bigger nuts well anyone that does a bit of off-roading would know keep your wheels on the high bits hit everything at speed and all that stuff not when you've got Manny just drive straight and keep your foot down come on Manny some pretty bad luck. You can't see because the mud comes up on the screen. But... She pulls herself through. Well, I've just noticed something with Manny that I've never noticed before. It's got a fidget spinner. <laughs> I've never been to third. Oh, oh, she don't like that. Oh no, she's picking up. Oh my god. She's never seen this sort of speed. Now, a broad selection of nuts, but I had this idea that just maybe that will help me notch it in. And then once you then take the power off the solenoid, it will spring down a little bit and that will hold it. Should be alright. Well, I've got to be honest, that worked an absolute treat. I had to put it in with a lever bar, but that's good. And it popped in and I can't move it with my fingers. So I would say that's a jolly good job. Now, what we're going to do, we'll take these bolts off and then you can remove that cover, knock that cap off, disconnect all the wires and I'm not going to, I'm not going to take the solder hood off, I'm not going to cut my wires, I'm just going to loom it all up so that it's not going to arc on anything and just leave it. And that way, if you want to put it back to the original, it's, it's not a lot of work to do so. Well, it's about that time. Just putting the, uh, the last fuel pump connection on got a bit of fuel in it not too much just want to make sure the tank's not leaking or anything um and yeah do a bit of run up on the ground it's not a lot of fun to get that on wasn't too bad i was expecting worse just got to be very careful of that pipe when you're putting the pack in because it's all a bit snug yeah. lots of room when the pack's out though I definitely prefer this. Yeah, imagine putting that pipe on while you're with the pack in. You need some bloody long arms, don't you? The pump sounding healthy. I can hear the fuel coming through. Now, the best part about 4.3 series vehicles is they're a self-bleeding system. So you just let the pump run, and it, if you've got air in there, it'll just bleed itself up. No cracking off of injectors, none of that. Just let it pump for a minute. The pump sounds healthy, doesn't it? You when there's when there's a uh, when the filter blocks inside you hear it and it's like it's like a sound. Exactly like that. Pretty good, wasn't it? That was pretty accurate. Yeah, exactly like that. Um, and straight away you know your filter's blocked inside the fuel tank. Now they do have filters on the engine. They very rare do they ever get any crap in because it's filtered through a brass filter actually in the fuel tank before it ever gets there. Um, so yeah, they're pretty good. Most important thing with running up packs, always pull that out. Now that disengages drive from your engine to your gearbox through your transfer box. You can leave it in so long as you take your prop off. But if that prop starts spinning, it can be pretty catastrophic. Wouldn't it be awful if someone forgot to do that? That would be a very bad day. Yeah, yeah. And whatever you do, definitely don't rev it because then it really would be a bad day. if you think that this should be our next project. I always love uh, dragging things out the hedge. I wouldn't like to drag that out the hedge though. I think that's something you'd have to get running. It's about 56 tonne. 
so I think we'd struggle to drag it. Right, we have manhandled the pack frame into position. It is about that time to dollop the pack back in really. Tom's had a good old scrape about. It looks a bit gobby, but there's no real big bits of mud, which is which is what causes us problems. Um, and yeah. Right, now, hopefully you can all start to get an understanding of how bloody tight these things are. There is not a lot of room to wiggle anything around. Now, an ABBA pack is probably slightly better of the two because it's more or less a straight lift. So it's just up and down. When you're doing four, three, twos, you've sort of got to maneuver it about a bit more. But in theory, these are just a straight lift. Let's proceed. Right, and it's going down quite nicely. We're not there just yet. We're a bit of jiggling. If you go down on the main. After a bit of jiggy pokery, the pack is now in. I've been under, I've put all the pack bolts in so we know it's definitely seated right. Um, always do that before you take your pack lifting frame off. No one wants to take the pack lifting frame off and then find that the pack's slightly off and you can't get all the pack bolts in. And then you've got to put the frame on or stick a big lever bar in places you don't really want to stick a big lever bar. Um, and yeah, but now it's down and we can uh, continue getting it all plumbed up. Well. The Abbott pack is coming along nicely. Fuel tanks in, packs in, all bolted down. Um, got to put that cover back on and put that brace on and just a few more little bits. But I think it's home time really. The light's starting to go. I've not had a coffee in about 45 minutes. Do you also think, Tom, we should clean out the back a little bit? I think it's very deserving. Yeah, I think it does and all. And we're back down. Now it's very, very wet. It's rained all night. It's rained all day. It's very, very wet. How wet is it, Tom? What are you doing in there, Ashley? Uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a swamp in here. There's a lot of water in the bottom and a lot of mud. And there... Uh, nice. I'm not, not oh. having a good time. Oh yeah, I can see all the water down there. Yes. That, that doesn't look like a lot of fun. Yeah, what they really should have in here is it wouldn't be nice if it was like a chair to sit on, like a, like a seat or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, that that would be that would be really helpful. Yeah, I might have to get one of those. Like, yeah, well, we'll you could call it like a driver's seat or something, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just sit on the pile of mud instead. You'll be alright. Yeah. So I've been thinking, Tom. Yeah. What we need, because you can never hear me. Yeah. So we need a set of these, and we can always wear them. You, you are aware you're shouting. They're a bit tight <laughs> on my ears. <laughs> I thought it was quieter. <laughs> what are you doing, Ash? It's a bit of a compromising position. Tom, I'm a vulnerable man right now. <laughs> Can you get any funny ideas? <laughs> right, are you ready, Tommy boy? Oh yeah, I'm trying to bring it forward a bit. <laughs> yeah. Down there, peasant. Stole the white spot down there, 
I feel like the all and powerful up here. You're, you're in my spot and I'm in the mud, it's not fair. I'm in your spot, you're in mine. So wet. Oh my. Well, like the pattern it's left on the grass. playing Jenga and he wants us to these are our engine blocks now they're very handy because you can put a pack on them what we need is Miley Cyrus sit her on the end of it and then when I start to slew I came in like a red you know. Oh, it's coming! And you always remember to let your lockouts off. Because that'll bounce the life out of you when you go driving. Hopefully, it'll be beautiful. 